Hello, my dear audience. Of all the case study houses, number 26 is the most spectacular. Cantilevering over a hillside and resting on steel columns, the house is almost completely free of the ground. This makes it similar to the many hillside constructions of my favorite architect, John Laudner. And although made of different materials, there are a few interesting similarities with the Sturgis House by Frank Lloyd Wright. At the same time, the minimalist and industrial appearance makes it a prime example of the case study movement. So it is an interesting combination of organic architecture and the international style. Number 26 is the only case study house that was built in Northern California and it is located just north of San Francisco in the small town of San Rafael. In the hills near the Bay of the Ocean is a neighborhood overlooking a golf course with this street much higher on the hill than this street. The house is placed on the hillside between the two streets Located at the end of a driveway, behind a row of other homes. The curving driveway descends over the hillside towards the carport, which forms the highest part of the house, with the actual home below the driveway and placed against the slope of the hillside. The white colored steel beams are clearly visible and they are the first thing that catches your attention when you arrive at the house, making the construction the most important part of the design. What is the story behind the unusual look of the residence? Let's take a look at the construction. Built in 1962, the house was sponsored by the Bethlehem Steel Company. Harrison Fuller, the CEO of Bethlehem Steel, commissioned it as a vacation home for himself. But by creating an eye-catching structure, using steel from his own company, it was a great demonstration project at the same time. To generate maximal publicity, Fuller approached the Arts and Architecture magazine to publish the drawings and to cover the entire construction process with photos in a magazine, making it the 26th design in a case study project. Fuller knew that Beverly Thorne was the right man for the job because he had previously designed a spectacular home for jazz magician Dave Brubeck. This home also featured an impressive floating metal structure that earned Thorne the nickname the Man of Steel. First concrete caissons were installed in the ground over which a steel framework was placed. This animation shows the building procedure of the framework, step by step. First the concrete caissons were put in a hillside. Then the horizontal steel beams were placed on the ground. Followed by a series of steel rectangles placed in the front on the lowest part of the hill. On top of these rectangles a series of other frames was placed. These frames support both the floor and the roof of the living space. One beam was placed to support the floor of the carport. And finally four beams were placed diagonally over the living space and the carport. All steel parts were prefabricated and on the location connected together with steel bolts. This was done in one day in only eight hours, making the construction method very cost effective. When we look at the floor plan, we can see that the nine steel beams create eight identical bays, each 10 feet in width. The four beams of the carport were placed right above the lower beams, giving a part of the living space double height. Two wooden roofs were placed on both the series of beams. with a floor made of timber which was covered with an aggregate finish. The walls were made of plywood and large windows were placed. Between the two roofs the spaces were entirely filled in with glass, creating clerestories. And the sunlight from the clerestories 
enters the social spaces through large rectilinear openings in a lower roof. The floor of the carport was made of concrete slabs. Here you can see that the floor of the carport is completely free of the ground. From the carport you can take a look through the clerestories into the skylights of the lower roof. Now we're gonna take a look at the floor plan. We color the parts that are inside, decorate the drawing with furniture and name the functions of the different rooms. Here you see the floor plan in combination with the roof construction. Because the carport is higher, the living space is accessible over a staircase. This concrete staircase is resting on the hillside. At the end of the stairs is a pathway at the left, from where you can walk underneath the floor of the carport. But when you walk straight ahead, you can enter the front door. Through this glass sliding door, we enter the living room. I really like how the construction becomes an integral part of the interior with the many white steel beams composed together like an abstract artwork. Here you see the living room through the open spaces in the lower roof. The only part of the house that is made of stone is the backside of the fireplace, which is made of bricks. The chimney, however, is made of white colored steel. Now we go to the dining space. From there we go to the open kitchen. Around the corner is a small alcove that can be used as a den or a small dining room. Here you see the skylight above the small dining space. Through this opening you can walk behind the fireplace and go to the front door. Now we go back towards the kitchen. In front of the kitchen is a small sitting space that can be closed off from a dining area with sliding walls. This explains the small door next to the dining table. In the far left of the living room is a corner where two windows come together, enlarging the feeling of space. Corners of glass were an invention by Frank Lloyd Wright. Eight glass sliding doors give access to the balcony. Through one of these doors we step on a terrace that provides beautiful views over the landscape in every direction. Connecting the interior with the exterior. Over the balcony we walk towards the first of three small identical bedrooms. From the living room you can enter a corridor that connects all the bedrooms from inside. There are two similar bathrooms and a laundry room. Here you see the entrance to the master bedroom. In the master bedroom we see yet another corner of glass. Number 26 is one of the largest case study houses and it was even intended to be much larger 
because in 1963 Beverly Thorne designed an addition with a swimming pool and a guest house placed underneath the main structure that would have been accessible over a spiral staircase with the entrance in the living room. But due to a lack of funds this addition was never realized. At the rear is a pathway from where you can walk from one side of the house to the other side. We walk past the tool shed underneath the floor of the carport and we leave the house at the other side. From here stairs go down over the hillside and from below the hill you can have a good look at the steel beams under the house. While some case study houses are criticized for being uncomfortable and being too minimalist, I think number 26 is one of the most pleasant case study homes to live in. It might not be as iconic or famous as number 21, 22 or the Eames house. And the floor plan is simple and straightforward. But it is a construction that makes it an interesting a masterpiece of engineering.